Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester four, routing and switching, connecting networks. This is chapter nine, section 9.2, network troubleshooting. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to determine the symptoms and causes of network problems using layered model and be able to troubleshoot a network using the OSI layered model. So for troubleshooting tools that we have, common software troubleshooting tool would be NMS tools like network management tools, which include device level monitoring, configuring and fault management uh, tools. Then we have a knowledge basis that like online network devices, vendor knowledge bases have become indispensable sources of information. The vendor based knowledge base bases are combined with internet search engines like Google, a network administrator has access to a vast pool of experience based information. Then we have a baseline tools. Many tools for automating the network documentation and baseline process are available. Those tools are available for Windows, Linux and AUX. Then, then we have a hardware troubleshooting tool. So we have a software troubleshooting and a hardware troubleshooting tools. Now for the hardware troubleshooting tools, we have like network analysis modules. For example, I've gone to the website. So this is for, for example, we have some of the tools available. This is the knowledge base, which each vendors will put there in there, uh, like a website, uh, some tools for troubleshooting. Um, Cisco, iOS, EPC, this has embedded packet captures, for example, like a, similar to something like a Wireshark or something like that. Then we have the network analysis. Now this is like a hardware troubleshooting tools. For example, we can analyze the network as a packet coming going to our network. Then digital multimeters used to measure. This is used to measure uh, two or more electrical values, uh, principal in volts, currents, and resistance. Uh, then other tool, for example, is we have the cable testers. So if we check the, the cable, we have connected uh, or we have created a cable, whatever, straight through or crossover cable. Then we have a cable analyzer to see what, for example, what's the other side of the cable and as well as some portable network analyzers as well. So this is like analyzing your network with portable tool. Great tools for troubleshooting. The using a syslog server for troubleshooting, we have to worry about the severity levels. So here, for example, the highest severity level is zero, which is emergencies or uh, system is unusable. Then severity level of one, which is alert, immediate action is needed. Severity level of two, critical, critical condition exists. And then severity level three errors, error condition exists. Four, we have a warning, warning condition exists. And then, then the lower severity levels, we have notification, severity five, information, severity six, and debugging is severity level seven. So physical layer troubleshooting, for example, when we, we start with a bottom up approach, we start with the physical layer. Performance maybe is lower than the baseline. Lack of connectivity, for example, if there is no, there's no life, life or lights on the device. Network bottleneck or congestion. High CPU utilization rates and console error messages. So these are the symptoms, for example, and then we have to worry, okay, that's a physical layer and the causes could be something with the power related. Maybe it hasn't been plugged on or maybe the, it's, the power has tripped and the fuse has blown or whatever. That is a physical layer. Hardware fault, cabling fault, attenuation, noise or interface configuration errors. Then at layer two, for example, some of the symptoms that we have at layer two is no functionality or connectivity at network layer or above network operating below the baseline performance level or we have excessive broadcast messages here or we have some console messages here some of the causes could be encapsulation errors addressing mapping errors framing errors or we have a, st a short uh, spanning tree protocol failure or spanning tree protocol loops at layer three network layer so network failure maybe suboptimal performance here, some of the general causes could be, sorry, so some of the causes could be general network issues, connectivity issues, neighbor issues, topology database, or the routing table. And then we, we at layer four and above, we're looking at the, some common access control list, misconfiguration, selection of traffic flow, order of ACL entries, maybe you put the more like a, a 
general at the top and more specific at the end then implicit deny you forgot maybe you created an access list statement that says deny this 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 and deny you didn't create any permit statement well, that's an error because we have implicit deny so what you're doing you deny everything address an ipv4 wildcard mask maybe you have put the wrong wildcard mask selection of transport layer protocol for example the instead of using udp you're using tcp um, that's you know, the problem here um, source and destination port numbers so we have to make sure that okay the source is on the left and the destination is on the right so after the ip address we put the source port number and the direction use the, the established keyword and uncommon protocols some other problems that we could have and this is a boot p and dhcp dns and wind server snmp and tunneling or encryption protocols at the application at the layer five six and seven session presentation and application here we have a, the application layer protocol uh, troubleshooting uh, for example some of these protocols you can see it on the screen there components of troubleshooting end-to-end -end connectivity when there is no end-to-end -end connectivity and the administrator chooses to troubleshoot with bottom-up approach these are the common steps the administrator can take first step one check physical connectivity at the point where network communication stops including cables and hardware the problem might be if there's a faulty cable or interface or involved misconfigured or faulty hardware step two check for duplex mismatches in step three check the data link and the network layer addressing of the local network this includes ipv4 op tables ipv6 neighbor tables mac address table and vlan assignments four verify the default gateway is correct then we move on to step five ensure that devices are determined the correct path from the source to the destination manipulate the routing information if necessary then we go to step six verify that the transport layer is functioning properly telnet can also be used to test transport layer connectivity from the command line then we move on to step seven verify that there is no acl block in the traffic step eight ensure the dns settings are correct there should be an, an accessible dns server thank you very much for watching my videos please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been astrid krasnitsyu bye bye